or at least we can guide them to a doctor or something. I spoke to a few girls here who told me they enjoy coming to a school like this because it's a place where they feel safe. They also get to talk to other girls in similar situations and not feel judged. I actually like it better than regular high school. It's an opportunity for these young women to take baby steps for a brighter future. In Los Angeles, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Thomas Riley High School also has two other sister schools in the LA area. Well, just down the street from Thomas Riley, an all-boys Catholic high school continues to beat the odds as its students set a new 10-year record for academic excellence and hold a commitment ceremony. Anna Marcos has more. It's a little like athletic signing day for the smart kids. And boy, are the graduates at this college signing day enthusiastic. Standing ovations are common as the students highlight their achievements a month before they graduate from Verbum Day High School in Watts. My major is nursing. My major is animation, and I'll be attending Marymount California University in the fall. Cal Poly Pomona. I plan on majoring in culture, politics, and political economy at the one and only Georgetown University. I really wanted to get into, you know, politics because a lot of people in my community don't understand it and don't know how to connect. Right now, my people feel like they don't have a voice, and basically, I want to be their advocate. Here's a statistic to be proud of. 100% of these grads get accepted into college, most of them into four-year universities. And that's a remarkable achievement in an area where about 50% of high school students drop out. And I want to major in biology and hopefully double major in theology on a pre-med course. Now that's ambition, and Carlos Herrera, class valedictorian, has plenty of it. All the students are bred for success with a corporate work program that allows them to go to school four days a week and work one day to help pay the tuition while getting real-life job experience. They also learn something extra along with the three R's, a college prep course that gives everyone a shot at college. I think that we are rewriting the narrative for students in the inner city communities. I mean, there are some amazing kids that live in this community, there are some motivated kids, there are some kids who are going to be our future leaders. Hitting the books paid off for Carlos Rivas Jr. He's earned a $40,000 scholarship as he heads for a career in aerospace engineering. I feel proud. I feel um, so emotional because um, he's going to graduate from high school and then go to college. I'm going to make her proud. These students have already made lots of people proud. In 10 years, not one graduate has failed to get a foot in the college door. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. School staff say getting in may be tougher than other schools, but they rarely turn anyone away due to grades if they are committed to change and to the program. For more information, visit the website on your screen. Well, have some free time and love books? Well, the L.A. City Library needs you. As Gil Reyes shows us, people of all ages are making connections through volunteer opportunities. Well, that's great. Then we remember each other. Meet Robert Goldsmith, better known affectionately as Grandpa Bob. At 100 years young, he volunteers at the L.A. City Library's Brentwood branch. I think I enjoy more working with children than with adults because the children, especially the four-year-olds, don't even know how impaired I am. So they think I'm normal and that makes me feel real good. Hey, look at this one. That Grandpa Bob is a storytelling and reading or star volunteer. Brentwood's head librarian says Bob, a volunteer for the past six years, is a natural. I remember one time in particular that I just heard this young kid, you know, laughing. And as I like to say, it's the kind of laughter that comes deep from the soul. This kid was just cracking up. And I thought at first, you know, that's a little loud. Let me see what's going on. And Bob was reading them this funny story. It's a chance for those of us who have lived a long time to give back something of our understanding and knowledge to the younger, younger generation. Let's try the next page. Grandpa Bob is rewarded, too. The day I spend with the children is the best day in the week. Uh, I look forward to it, and uh, it, it sort of sparks my 
ambition to keep alive. We have 72 branches and Central Library, and each one of those locations needs volunteers for a variety of different reasons. So volunteer opportunities are waiting at your local branch. To find out more, log on to LAPL.org and hit the Get Involved icon. Outside the Brentwood branch, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. You can also find opportunities by searching LAPL Volunteer on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Well, from books to the library's latest exhibit, which showcases some heavenly art as it pairs everyday Angelinos with a set of wings. Our own Anna Marcos takes in the celestial happenings. Anna. Yana, want to try your hand at being an angel? You can try these painted on angel wings at the LA Public Library's City of Angels exhibit, where everyone can be an angel. I think it brings up the the angels and everybody. This exhibit at the LA Public Library allows all Angelinos, no matter how naughty or nice, to show their wings. I think it's going to be a huge hit. I think there will be hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands and thousands of, of people over the next few months taking their photo in front of the wings. And uh, what, a, what could be a more wonderful celebration of Los Angeles? But the central attraction at the exhibit is the group of photos of angel-like citizens, both the regular people and the VIPs. I mean, come on, a cop with wings? You bet. How about a street sanitation sweeper in all his celestial glory? Okay, it's pretty easy to imagine kids as angelic, some of the time anyway. The photos include every strata of society, from city leaders like Mayor Eric Garcetti to homeless residents on Skid Row, to women before and after giving birth. It was such a moving exhibit because Bill Rosendahl was pictured and he's passed away. It was cute to see Mayor Reardon, who's the namesake of the Central Library, surrounded by kids, his love. The seed for the idea started in 2012 when street artist Colette Miller created what she calls renegade street art, showing angel wings, which then grew into the Global Angel Wings Project. Since then, it's gone global. I've done them in Africa, Australia, Taiwan, France. I do them um, globally. They're to remind humanity that we are the angels of this earth. So here's a chance to show your own humanity, diversity, and your angelic side, Angelinos. The exhibit runs through August 27th. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. And when you visit, don't forget to post your angel wings on social media under the hashtag showusyourwings. While the city moves one step closer to permitting unapproved housing units, Mayor Eric Garcetti gets personal about his experience with homelessness, and another park kicks into high gear with brand new soccer fields. All these stories in City Beat. The Los Angeles City Council voted to approve an ordinance which will help boost the city's affordable housing stock at a time when the city is facing a severe housing crisis. The unapproved dwelling unit ordinance will safely permit previously unapproved housing in multifamily units while requiring property owners to put an equal amount of affordable units at the same location on the market. Mayor Eric Garcetti took to the stage at the Los Angeles Theater Center for a special edition of the Moth Story Slam, a community program that promotes connection through personal storytelling. This event shed light on LA's homelessness crisis by giving storytellers a platform to share true life tales about homelessness. The mayor, along with 10 others, shared five-minute personal stories on the theme of home, the mayor talked about the connection he felt with one formerly homeless individual as he helped move him into his new home. The City of Los Angeles Department of Rec and Parks, along with Councilmember Paul Krikorian and the Bureau of Engineering, cut the ribbon to celebrate the grand opening of three new state-of-the-art synthetic turf soccer fields at Whitsett Fields Park in North Hollywood. Officials say an estimated 5 million gallons of water will be saved annually with the three new synthetic fields versus natural turf fields. I prefer to see the kids in our community, in our soccer fields, doing soccer rather than being at the, na at the neighborhoods, you know, doing 
uh, things that not, they are not supposed to be doing. The Oscar-winning love story La La Land pays tribute to some of L.A.'s most scenic spots. But this time, it's the city honoring the filmmakers during La La Land Day in L.A. Gil Reyes has more. More than 300 feet above City Hall steps, aerial dancers perform numbers from the movie musical La La Land, the stylistic love story set in Los Angeles with so many of our favorite destinations as backdrops, including Angel's Flight in downtown and the Griffith Observatory. On hand for what's officially La La Land Day here in the city of Los Angeles are Oscar-winning director Damien Chazelle and producer Jordan Horowitz. Um, and Damien had this crazy idea that he wanted to, to make a, a musical romance that was a love letter to Los Angeles. And, um, you know, we were young and we decided we were just going to kind of shoot for the stars and, and try to make it happen. Um, and it's, it's pretty amazing that uh, now six years later uh, I'm standing here on the steps of... Uh, City Hall with the mayor behind me. Mayor Eric Arcetti performing City of Stars. The song made composer Justin Hurwitz a two-time Oscar winner for best original song and score. So many, so many of the musicians who played in the score grew up in LA and were part of the, the club scene or the LA music scene. Um, you know, their whole lives. Other ones were the best musicians in their own cities and then flocked here. Filmmakers thanked local leaders for helping to bring film production back to Los Angeles after years of runaway productions. So I say to you, keep your productions here. Even if you don't get the tax credit, City Hall will work with you to shave your costs and to have locations like City Hall be free for you and to be able to make sure that the vision that you have in your heart of a story that you want to tell can be told in the very best place on the face of the earth right here. And the film's worldwide appeal is expected to further boost LA's already impressive tourism numbers. You figure last year, 47 million people visited Los Angeles, the sixth straight year of record-breaking tourism. Outside City Hall, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Well, summer tourists and film fans will also want to visit Watts Tower and downtown's Grand Central Market. Both are prominently featured in La La Land. Well, if you love DIY projects, then you'll appreciate all the creative handmade zines on display at the latest LA Zine Fest. Let your hair down during a bohemian country and music fair and salute our military during a Battleship Iowa Memorial Day celebration. All this in this week's Things to Do. The 6th Annual LA Zine Fest is back, celebrating self-publishing and DIY culture in the community. This year's fest will feature over 200 zinesters, writers, illustrators, comics creators, photographers, and more. Selling, trading, and sharing their work all in one place for one day. Zine Fest will be held in the basement level exhibit hall of the California Market Center in downtown LA on Sunday, May 28th. For more, visit LAZineFest.com. Get in touch with your Bohemian side at the 44th Annual Topanga Days Country Fair and Fundraiser for Topanga's Community House. Over the years, Topanga Days has grown into LA Bohemian Rock Music Festival and has become so much more than just a fundraiser. It all takes place Saturday, May 27th through Monday, May 29th at 1440 Topanga Canyon Boulevard. For more, visit TopangaDays.com. Come celebrate Memorial Day at the Battleship Iowa. Enjoy an opening ceremony, then stay for a fun-filled day of activities, including live music, DJ, food trucks, vendors, military vehicles, sailors, bar, and more. The event honors the men and women who have served and continue to serve the U.S. It all takes place Saturday, May 27th at 10.30 a.m. at the Battleship Iowa, located at 250 South Harbor Boulevard. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.
but disaster strikes without warning. What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Hi, I'm Mike from Los Angeles. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel.
Good morning. If I could ask everyone to please take your seats. Today's date is Friday, May 26. Shh. If everyone would please take their seats. I want to welcome you to uh, your city hall. This council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. The public is welcome. We do not have a quorum as of yet, but we can begin today with a, the presentation portion. So I'd like to defer to Mr. Rue at this time. everyone. Thank you, Mr. President. And now let me get the community folks. Go on this side, please. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Council President and colleagues. And um, actually, uh, Councilman McGill Cedillo was supposed to lead this presentation for, uh, but he is very out sick. He is very, very sick, so he couldn't be here. And, I, and I'm just so happy to uh, co-present this with him as well as cover for him. But today, I join members from the API community to reflect upon and denounce a racist piece of history and immigration policy that once targeted immigrants. 135 years ago, President Chester Arthur signed the Chinese Exclusion Act, the first federal law to exclude immigration of a single group of people based on race. This was a result of growing tensions, fear, and anger towards Chinese immigrants. The Chinese were de depicted as coolies who stole jobs from white Americans and were blamed for the economy's low wages. The Chinese Exclusion Act was finally repealed in 1943, 61 years after it was signed, impacting an entire generation. This story is all too familiar. Today, we are living in a time where Americans are still fearful of immig immigrants and minorities. We must remember and reflect on our past so we do not repeat the same mistakes. The Chinese American Citizens Alliance is working hard to ensure that all immigrants receive the same protections under our laws. CACA is a national organization who has fought against racial discrimination, opposed anti-immigration policies, and worked to enhance civic pride among Chinese Americans. Representing the organization is Annie Yi, president of the Los Angeles chapter of the Chinese American Citizens Alliance. If I could have her speak. Hi, I'm Annie Yi, and I'm the president of the Chinese American Citizens Alliance of Los Angeles. And I'd like to thank the City Council for adopting May 6 as the Day of Inclusion. Thank you also to Council Member Cedillo and Rue for getting this bill passed. The Chinese American Citizens Alliance started in 1895 and is one of the oldest civil rights groups in America. Here in LA, we're, we've been here for 105 years. Our history spans the Chinese Exclusion Act. The act excluded Chinese from entering the country, as Council Member Ru said, for 61 years, and in effect, at least two generations. I believe things would be so different today for Chinese Americans if they didn't have so many laws that held them back from progressing forward. This year marks the 135th anniversary of the Inclusion Act. Today with us, we have LACCD trustee Mike Ng, Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, leaders from the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association, Asian Americans Advancing Justice, Organization of Chinese Americans, the Greater San Gabriel Valley Chinese American Citizens Alliance, Chinatown Service Center, Chinese American Museum. Together, we represent the national coalition called NoMoreExclusion.org. Our member, Munson Kwok, was on that steering committee. We commemorate May 6th as a day of inclusion. Thank you for having us here. Thank you, Annie. Next, I'd like to introduce my very good friend and a civil rights champion, the Honorable Mike Ng, trustee for the Los Angeles Community College, Los Angeles City Community College District, and prior to serving as a trustee, Mike served on the state legislature as an assembly member and passed Assembly Resolution 76. 
This resolution established California's official day of inclusion, making the end of the Chinese Exclusion Act and recognizing the contributions of all immigrants who make our city and nation great. Viking. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Council Member David Ryu, and thank you uh, to Council Member Gil Cedillo. I want to especially thank Council Member Cedillo, uh, Council Member Blumenfield, Council Member Price, Council Member Krikorian, because they were part of the state assembly that actually instituted <coughs> California's Day of Inclusion for the first time in California's history. We designate the end of the Exclusion Act. And let me tell you why that act is so important for me, HCR 76. It's important to me because my grandfather was a victim of the Chinese Exclusion Act. He was not able to see his family. He was frozen here because of the racist immigration laws. And you would think that at the end of the day, when in 1943, that Chinese Exclusion Act ended, that you would find bitterness and hatred for those that instituted this horrible law. But instead, my grandfather was a lowly cook and became a houseboy in San Francisco, was greatly helped by people of all ethnic backgrounds, all walks of life. And his conclusion was that why not celebrate and why not thank those people that helped him on his very, very dangerous, life-threatening, and many times depressing journey to where he was able to raise a family. And that's why I worked so hard to try to educate people to turn this dark, dark period of, ex of exclusion into inclusiveness. So therefore, thank you very much to the City Council and to the Chinese American Citizens Alliance. You made history. You will be remembered. Thank you. Thank you, and on behalf of the City Council, the Mayor, um, you know, the, today is, an, is it's very appropriate that we re remember the 135 years um, anniversary of the Chinese Exclusion Act, but more importantly, recognize that it is a day of inclusion, because this is not a Chinese American issue. This is not, this is not just an Asian American issue. This is an immigrant issue and an American issue. And unfortunately, history is starting to repeat itself, and that's why it is more important that we remember our past and remember the impacts and um, so we can go forward together because diversity gives us strength. So thank you and on behalf Well said, well said. Let's give them a round of applause. And on behalf of the City Council, Councilman McGill Cedillo and myself, uh, I'd like to present this to CACA and all the community members. Thank you so much. Okay, we have a quorum, Madam Clerk. Why don't you call the roll? Blumenfield, Bonn, and Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Harris, Dawson, Wiesar, Kretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson. Ten members present in a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Buscaino moves and Mr. O'Farrell seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Okay, Ms. Martinez moves and Mr. Wezar seconds. Continue. Mr. President, there are requests to receive and file 1A in as much as the lien was rescinded, 1J in as much as the lien was paid in full, 1G and, and O in as much as the uh, properties are owner-occupied dwellings and exempt from lien processing. And finally, there are requests to continue 1D to July 25th, 2017, and 1M and P to June 23rd, 2017, sir. Okay, so without objection, that shall be the order. Continue. 
Item number one is an item notice for public hearing. And Mr. President, there are cards on one. Okay, let's continue then. Item number two is an item for which public hearing has been held. However, the uh, Plum Committee waived consideration of this matter, so the recommendations of the West Los Angeles Area Planning Commission are posted, circulated, and now before council. Uh, public hearing should take place in council for this matter, and there are cards on this, sir. Continue. Items 3 through 14 are items for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before us. Uh, Mr. President, there is a, a request to hold number 9 for amending motion, and there are cards on all the rest of the items, sir. Okay, thank you. All right. So that brings us back to presentations. Yes, sir. Mr. Krikorian, are you ready? Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, and members, every year the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power sponsors uh, a regional science bowl for schools within uh, the boundaries of Los Angeles Unified School District. And uh, it's been very a very important function of the DWP to do this because it helps to foster and encourage uh, our students to uh, spend more time in STEM education, to really hone their scientific skills, which is important for the department, which continues to be a national leader in renewable energy and water conservation and so many other things where scientific innovation is necessary. And it's very important to uh, our economy here in Los Angeles as we continue to try to create and attract jobs and industries that are uh, the cutting edge industries of the 21st century, the good paying jobs, that's the backbone of our industry is innovation um, and development of the next new thing here in Los Angeles. So it's especially appropriate that our municipally owned utility uh, sponsors this regional science bowl competition, which has become sort of the Super Bowl of science for high school students uh, here in Los Angeles. And if any athletic team had dominated uh, any competition uh, by winning 18 out of 20 championships, there would be some sort of an investigation. If some athletic team had done this, people would be investigating them for steroid use, or they would be changing the rules, or they would say that we need to, to realign the leagues, or they would be doing something to try to break up this constant champion. Uh, that, that dominates a competition to this degree. Well, this isn't an athletic competition, but we have exactly that kind of dominance from the North Hollywood High School Huskies who won the DWP Science Bowl Championship again for the 18th time out of 20 years. So please recognize the North Hollywood Huskies. This is this is really a, a breathtaking achievement when you think uh, of all of the schools in LAUSD, all of the private schools, the parochial schools, every high school within uh, the boundaries of LAUSD, beyond the boundaries of our city, uh, compete in this competition. And um, the best of the best of the best science students go head to head against each other, and year after year, Decade after decade, North Hollywood High School uh, seems to always come out on top. Um, having only lost twice in two decades is a pretty remarkable achievement. So um, I want to take a moment, first of all, to thank and to recognize the DWP for giving uh, our high school students this great opportunity. And I would like to recognize uh, the DWP's uh, representative who has for many years has been the person who's driven this forward, Walter Zeisel. Walter. Thank you, Councilmember Kikorian. I wanted to add a few remarks. Uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, West Senate and members of the Council, the um, Department of Water and Power is really excited to host the Science Bowl. This, this year we had 47 teams, 26 participating schools, charter, private, and parochial schools. It's a true community partnership because uh, it involves 100 volunteers, uh, employees, employee families, 
uh, alumni, past Science Bowl uh, participants, and community members. And then we have uh, about $25,000 in prize funding uh, from private organizations like Hitachi, which provides the first place scholarships, Office Depot, the U.S. Department of Energy, which funds the trip for the winning team to the Nationals, our Water and Power Credit Union, uh, IEEE, for example. Uh, so we're really excited that uh, North Hollywood has won uh, every regional competition since 1998. Um, this year, um, they placed in the top 10 nationally, winning their their division, which was which was very exciting. I want to thank uh, Coach Al Tarmain and his assistant who's not here, Len Soloff, who's a retiree and comes back every year to help. So thank you very much, Al Tar, for all your effort in uh, working with the students. Um, this competition, as I mentioned, involves schools from all over the city. Uh, every part of the city is, is represented and we're excited about that. I want to mention in passing a few of our other programs that don't get as much recognition, but we really appreciate the council's support. Um, our Times in Education program, which is for grades 4 through 12, covers all of our subjects, um, reached this year 80,000 students. There are about 800 teachers involved. And this year we had an art poster contest supporting the city campaign Save Energy LA. And those posters will be put on our website um, uh, shortly and on social media. We also have an electric safety uh, program which reached 40,000 elementary students and over 200 schools. Um, we're also partnering this fall with the Metropolitan Water District, the California Department of Water Resources, Caltech, um, Roots and Shoots through Jane Goodall Foundation on a three-part, 24-hour a workshop on the environment. It's called Best Practices in Environmental Education uh, and Stewardship, stewardship where the uh, teachers will work their students develop a part, uh, stewardship projects all over the city. So we're really excited about that. And we also participate with Caltech on a, um, uh, uh, on a new uh, really exciting app uh, that is interdisciplinary. So, and then one last thing is that we are also the host for a seven part uh, training program for the LAUSD Academic Decathlon program. LAUSD, an academic decathlon, has won more than half of the national championship, which is amazing. Anyway, I will turn this back. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Walter. Thank you to you and all the men and women of the DWP for uh, being so supportive of our, of our young people. Um, I should have mentioned, uh, North Hollywood High School entered two teams in the Science Bowl. They finished first and second. So the domination is, is really complete. And I'd like to now recognize their dominating coach, who's here with us every year to have this recognition, uh, Coach Al Termain. Coach? Maybe you can introduce your team too. All right, well, thank you for uh, recognizing us. Um, we really appreciate it. It's a, a special treat for the students. And uh, it's a wonderful competition. And we really appreciate the work put in by everybody at uh, the DWP and uh, by extension uh, the City Council and making the competition possible. Um, I've got both teams behind me. I guess I'll introduce them briefly. Um, oh goodness, we've got Dominic Chu and Victor Chin, our graduating uh, A-team captain who's going to Harvard next year. And Marcos Perez and Lina Kim and Al Alex Kim and uh, I gotta look behind me, <laughs> Justin Lee. Um, also graduating senior, and Do Yun Chian, and Richard Shuai, and Albert Liu, and Tom Panenko in the corner. Uh, they're great. It's a delight to work with them, and uh, I'll miss my seniors when they graduate, but we'll hope to be back next year with a national championship. Thank you, Coach. And, and can, can we bring up Victor to, to say a few words on behalf of the team? Victor? Um, on behalf of the team, thank you to Councilmember um, Kerkorian, as well as Mr. Zizek for supporting us. Um, thanks to all the um, members of the LADWP, LADWP who make this competition possible. Um, personally, I would like to thank my team for what a great, wonderful year that we've had. And um, again, thanks to the City Council for supporting this competition. Mr. Uh, Kerkorian and, 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 and members, and a lot of us seated around this horseshoe to the, 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 the students and to the teacher and the DWP, we're, we're a very competitive lot. And I was just 
sitting up here trying to wrap my head around 18 out of 20 titles. And I mean, you'd have to think about the UConn women's basketball team. I think they won like 111 games straight, but that's still not 18 out of 20 championships. The football, high school football team up north, De La Salle, I think went undefeated from two, <laughs> what is that, my notes, two, 92 to 2000. This, I can't even, and so this is 18 champ. Anyway, let's, uh, you are the future. Let's give them a round of applause. That is Remark, unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, Mr. President, just let me give you an example. I know Mr. Buscaino is 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 itching to get into the competition, so I thought I'd throw a question out uh, for the council and and maybe some of our students to to give you an example, a little flavor of uh, what the science bowl is like. So, gentlemen and ladies. Neglecting air resistance, projectile motion near the surface of the Earth can best be described as which of the following? W, a constant horizontal velocity and a constant vertical velocity. X, a constant non-zero horizontal acceleration and a constant vertical velocity. Y, a constant horizontal velocity and a constant non-zero vertical acceleration. Or Z, a constant non-zero horizontal acceleration and a constant non-zero vertical that. velocity. So, I Mr. President, it. what do you think? Well, <laughs> I just don't want to show off, so I'm going right. to defer right. to Mr. Buscaina. So, um, can I call a friend on that question? Yes, Perhaps your friends are right, right here, behind you. Buscaina. Okay, maybe they can help so, out on that one. Thank you. Anybody want to call it out? <laughs> Why? <laughs> It is, in fact, why a constant horizontal velocity and a constant <laughs> non-zero vertical acceleration. Bravo, Victor. Thank hey. you all very much, and congratulations to North anyway, College High School. Congrats. Congrats, guys. You guys are sweating Okay, we're going to now go to uh, Mr. Eric Previn. Mr. Previn, you have items 5 through 14. Uh, thank you, sir. It is Eric Previn from the, the second district, and uh, that was very exciting, and I love, I'm also very competitive, and that was a great competition, and contests are fantastic. So thank you so much for the Science Bowl winners. Um, I, item number uh, 14 is a very nice gesture from Mr. Englander. He's coming up with the Sunshine Landfill Community Benefit of 5000 for an exterior basketball court. Uh, re redo, which is that's exactly the way that money should be used, and if it costs a little more, that would be okay, because it's making something in the community better. Uh, item number 13, we have Buscaino for Wesson and Cedillo uh, looking to revise the guidelines for the Clean LA contest. Thank you, sir. I think those, it's always good to change the rules midstream and get it the way we like it, so hopefully that's in the interest of everybody, not just a selected group, but thank you. Um, and item number uh, 12, I have to say thank you to the State Coastal Conserv Conservation Group who are providing $2 million, uh, but it's an interesting choice to provide it for uh, the parcel G2 uh, Taylor Rail Yard uh, project, which is a, I'm not sure how that fits in their purview. I know they were all politically allied, so maybe that's what that's about, but so be it. it we appreciate the contribution. Uh, item number 11 is a, uh, what, are, what are the results of the TEFRA hearing? Because this was a TEFRA hearing, we're going to announce the results. Maybe the city attorney will do that, and then we could comment on that one once we know. Uh, item number eight is the Department of Neighborhood and Power Treasured Partners um, who are working, uh, actually we're just giving them use of the fourth floor, so that's fantastic. Uh, and the rotunda and some other stuff on September 9th. I think it's in connection, although it doesn't say it, with the Neighborhood Congress, but let's, let's double check on that to make sure that's what it's for. Uh, it's not for Mr. Sonnenschein and all the treasury. It's not a private thing, obviously, it's the Neighborhood Council. Item number nine, uh, sir, is CD7. This is your still overseeing things there. It's the Hillview Mental Health Facility. And 
is the California Enterprise Development Authority who are providing the bond service here a private entity? It sounds like it's public, but I think I once looked, and that's a private group, so hopefully they're, they're properly remunerated. Item six, you've got HCID and HCD, which caught me, and I had to go back and forth, but I'll figure it out at some point. And finally, um, item seven, the LA Times are going to get another cha-ching of 1800 as you make an announcement that the guy who was killed, Cosma Gonzalez, terrible story, uh, in 2010, we're looking for uh, those, those folks. But it's, it's seven years later, sir. So it does raise a question, um, you know, do we have a lead or is there something? How can the public be helpful to try to apprehend these criminals? But I'm not sure that uh, just throwing out a uh, classified advertising is going to do it. But... Nonetheless, let's move forward. Is it time for my general public comment, sir? Let's give him his one minute. Thank you, sir. Um, contests are wonderful in an engaging way. They can bring people into a community. And I would just ask that this body that is competitive and smart and knows the lay of the land, try to help us. We're in Studio City, and the Pacific Palisades, Bonin has a library contest for the summer. For kids participate. We would like to announce it at our June 17th uh, awesome little event in our community. And then submissions come in. We want to award them like these Science Bowl kids, but there's been a little wrinkle. Apparently gift cards you can't get. It's like a gift of public funds if you get them some gift cards. What, what can you suggest, Council President? This is your area. You, you're really good at this. We could Maybe we could post them on the website at Dunn or do something for the winners or, or at the library. I just We don't want to have this shut down on a bureaucratic technicality because it, it would be such a great way to go. And, you know, of course, timing being what it is, you know about the June 1 deadline on the Dunn submissions. And so we've got all the paperwork virtually lined up. We just need to get kind of somebody to say, yeah, it's going to be okay because it's appropriate. And that will stimulate families to come down to the library, submit the right, get a little cookie. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's go to Mr. Walsh. Mr. Walsh. Mr. Walsh, I think you have uh, every item except for two. So go, go right ahead. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or J. Walsh Confidential. Uh, the building and safety, they do a good job. I'm not one of those uh, white guys that, hey, you're all a bunch of crooks. You're all a bunch of crooks. When you do a good job, I say it. And I've lived here since uh, 1966. Uh, number uh, three and four. This is the uh, g gas franchise. This is uh, extending the terms. It's a, a, a sweetheart deal for the gas people. Uh, rent escrow, uh, you do a good job for the renters. And uh, number five, this is agreement uh, relative to lease agreements for new option agreements with 88th Street. I'm telling you, the, the, all these deals uh, appear to be crooked. Uh, number nine, uh, this is uh, not to exceed three and a half million dollars for the purpose of acquiring, installing, and equipping, equipping uh, furnishings. That's all furnishings for the Health, you melt, uh, health Center. Uh, number 10, number 10 is a call for projects grant award for the Cesar Chavez transit district uh we're talking about two hundred and eighty three thousand dollars a quarter of a million dollars here a quarter of a million dollars here, there there'll, there'll be no discussion of uh of where this money is going uh, among the city councilmen number 11 this is uh revenue bonds this is another multi-family uh dwelling it's uh 36 million dollars shot to hell a uh, private uh, corporation could have done it for about one-third the cost. Uh, number 12, Taylor York River Park. Well, it's neither a, a yard nor a river nor a park. Uh, and uh, number 13, uh, this is uh, number 14, funding additional, okay, outdoor basketball courts. Uh, you know, uh, relative funding for additional refurbishment uh, it doesn't say how much. I understand it's uh, close to $465,000 to uh, 
to mend uh, the, uh, the netting on the court, but they're not going to talk about it because it's in Mr. Englander's district and, he's, and, and Mr. Rue. So they're allowed to do anything they damn well want to. You can uh, take your six seconds. Two Fridays ago, right here, City Hall, 10.30 a.m. Thank fire. you. Mr. Wasserst, give you your one minute. Fire alarm went off, and go watch it. Go watch it. They did nothing, nothing. They sat there with their finger up their ass while I kept asking, shouldn't we evacuate? They have no plan. Everybody here was in first grade. The first thing in first grade that the teacher did was set up a fire alarm plan so that we would evacuate. Here, nothing, absolutely nothing. City Hall is a fire trap. Then there was an announcement, run for your lives. We could not understand the, the, uh, the fire trap uh, award. We left, but the scumbag uh, reporter who, who ab ab would love to have sex with the mayor. The mayor, uh, 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 what did the mayor do? He kept the story out of the LA Times. This goddamn building was evacuated. There was a fire here. There were flames, and it didn't appear in an LA Times. Scumbags. Thank you. Okay, let's go to uh, Mr. Herman. What do, what, what do we have on Mr. Herman? Items 1 through 14, Mr. Herman. When it comes to a lien, how do you oppose a lien? You stand here with your attorney and you say, I'm against the 300% interest and I want you to remove the lien from my property. Stop holding us hostage to a lien. Stop holding us hostage to a lien. Unless you send certified mail to correct the problem that you created by saying, I'm sorry, but you got too much trash in your yard. Well, God damn it, it's not trash. That's someone's private property with their trash in their yard. Mind your own fucking business Next time, send certified mail to their home and find the registered owner and cure and correct these fucking cleans. Now, let me take off the mask for Hugo Rossiter. Item nine, regarding the so-called, so-called Hillview mental health. Well, Hugo Rossiter knows about mental health because he's created it in CD7. Who the hell is Hugo Rossiter? He's the attorney representing Englander and Kanabi. And yet we still have three and a half million dollars unaccounted for for fixing the goddamn Hillview mental health. So you got a lot to chew on, LLC. $400 an hour, $800 an hour of doing nothing to negotiate a so-called variance on this issue. By the way, Hugo Rossiter, on number 10 in CD4... Stay on the uh, issue, Mr. Uh... CD10, Jose Weizar and the bitch, bitch, bitch O'Farrell relative to exchanging federal funds for what? Projects and grant awards? Well, all those grants and awards so should only and specifically be spent for what they're meant to be spent on. Got it? Bitches. And then I go into item number, the best one of all. Cedillo. I got nothing to say. And then I go into item number six from the chief legislative analyst, CLA resolution in the city's comments of the 2017 No Place Like Home. Fuck you, No Place Like Home. I've been homeless since 2008, and I'll say it for the record. Fuck all of you white niggers too for making homeless an issue in Los Angeles. Keep the fucking Olympics out here until you find homes for all the homeless veterans in our streets. They're women and children. Fuck you. God bless America and let's make it great. Trump. Let's give him his one minute. So now that we got Harmon, no, I'm sorry, H-A-R-M-O-N. Oh, Eric Harmon, yeah. That's not the issue today, though. 
My issue is, eh, have a seat so you can push the button. You're always throwing people out of public me meetings for exercising their First Amendment. Why can't you tolerate it? Is it offensive? Using intensifiers to speak out what's on our mind? You need the mental health. I can pay my rent, except I became homeless because you kicked me out of my rent control home. Fuck you. Now that I'm homeless, and I get to come here and exercise my 14th Amendment, my First Amendment, my Fifth Amendment, my Eighth Amendment, I get to say under 42 USC 1983, Fuck you, Herman. Not H-A-R-M-O-N, but H-E-R-M-A-N, Jason Wesson Jr. For fucking up my life and fucking every motherfucking American's life in this thank country. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Mr. Spindler. His items are... Oh, Mr. Spindler, I don't have a card for you. So let's go to Dr. Williams. Dr. Dr. Tom Williams. Dr. Tom Williams, his items are 11 and general po uh, comments, so he gets two minutes. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Tom Williams, LA 32 Neighborhood Council Director and member of the Land Use Committee. We're quite concerned about how housing is being done here, and this is for item 11 for housing in LA because we have another 90 unit development proposed for 90032 and we do not like the way that environmental considerations in this particular one, 11, it's at an interchange and is, I say, subject to a lot of air pollution from the surrounding uh, highway systems, I-5 and an interchange. So we're quite concerned regarding this location and how the people, our veterans, low income, will be treated with the air pollution from this interchange and the adjacent I-5. Are they going to have recirculating systems for the uh, ventilation? How much fresh air will they get? I don't know, not very much. People in the southern part of LA City have experienced the same thing and schools have to have complete air circulation and cleaning. So quite concerned about the location of this. Okay. I'm a newbie, so can I go to public comment now? You go on now. Hmm? Yes, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. okay. Uh, Give him a minute, Chair. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, it was a pivotal day. A unanimous vote of the MTA board said, we get a piece of $700 million of Measure R money for replacing the SR-710 single-tube tunnel with systems and demand maintenance, TSM, TDM. There are a lot of projects, but 90032 is included in that portion. We make up about 40% of the total length of the SR-710 within East LA and Northeast LA. We would like to make sure that Public Works and somebody within the council has an opportunity to get somebody into this committee that's being formed by MTA so that we can get a long share. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, Spindler, we sorted your stuff out. You have items. You're on all items. So, Mr. Spindler, come to the mic. Okay. Stay on the topic. All right, thank you so much. I'm just a puppet like you, I try. Number one, liens. Fuck all the liens. We don't want no more liens. I noticed many were canceled. 
Thank you so much for canceling the ones you did. Because people don't need to lose their houses. Houses are for living in. Even the fat people like Paul Carrette should live in a house. I think that. So, now we get to building and safety. Well, like Mr. Walsh says, I'm not the kind of puppet that complains about everything. No, I'm not that kind of puppet. You do a good job. We thank you. But for the record, the Building and Safety Department is and should be a registered terrorist organization with the UN. So we're going to have basketball carts and CD12. Yes, that's a good idea. But we need the basketball nets to be lowered significantly because most people in CD12 are little people like me. In fact, Mitchell Englander in his motion just amended that the basket be no higher than four feet so he can dunk. <laughs> now we get to clean LA contest. You can't clean up LA. It's a joke. So if you submit a paper that says LA is dirty, you win the top prize. Now we get to the Taylor Yard River Park. Yes, the boondoggle. Keep putting money into the toxic dump. Toxic dump. It will be named the Mitchell Farrell Toxic Dump Taylor Yard River Joke Park because it'll never be built. Now we get TEFRA funds or some shit on 96 multiple housing projects. That's a good thing. We support it because there's 15 council members coming in and all of your friends and relatives need to have those fake Section 8 houses so they can rent it and get the kickbacks. You know, like Councilman Zine told us he did. We support Cesar Chavez Transit Corridor. Yes, it is. But please clean up the area around Montecito Heights. It looks like shit. I drove through there the other day. There's shit everywhere. Please clean it up. It, it looks horrible. And then, of course, reinstating an award for Mr. Cosme Gonzalez. Waste of fucking time. Give him his general public comment minute. All right. So, as the puppet notes, we had a fire in this building. They nearly burnt the goddamn building down. There was an explosion. Somebody put something in a microwave oven, and the microwave oven exploded in this building. That is not a fire. Somebody, I believe, is attempting something in this building by putting a weaponized device in a microwave oven. It was covered up by the L.A. Times. The fire alarm went off. Nuri Martinez sat here in this chamber and let everybody stay because they don't want the International Olympic Committee to know that there is a planned terrorist attack if L.A. gets the games. And the L.A. Police Department can't stop it. They have no idea what's going on. Please, International Olympic Committee, do not give the games to Los Angeles. It's too dangerous. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hunt, items 3, 4, 5, 7, 10, and 13. Okay, the Red Chief Hunt for the record. Glad to see you guys are following the Brown Act today. Very important. I want to talk about the gas company, whatever they do in the public, comment or click on what's the name and see whatever they're doing, conservation. I'm going to move into five. Five would be, let's see, conservation of motion, Harrison and Dawson. Uh, investment department 
city attorney negotiating. Well, that's a good thing. I think you guys should start negotiating a little bit more. Uh, keep yourself out of trouble. 95% or 99% uh, percent of you guys' ordinance are unconstitution. What's the next one now? Five, six? Where am yeah, I? Yeah, three, four, five, seven, ten, and thirteen. Seven, ten, and thirteen. See that? See that's too much to remember all at one time. Wish you guys would go back to the old days. Re reaffirming uh, reward for who? Reward for killing. For killing. Well, I think we shouldn't be giving rewards for killings because we pay we we pay the Los Angeles Police Department to catch the bad guys, not the citizens to catch the bad guys. All right, next. Seven, ten, and this is this is very confusing because I don't know which ones. Okay, but anyways, I want to move into public comment about this time. Anyways, here's what I got to say. The city council and the city council members, I am the Red Chief Hunt. And I am going to be holding you guys accountable for your actions. And I'm, am, I will be going after individuals who violate the Brown Act. It's not a joke with me. I'm down here now. This is my job. Um, beware of my training from the ACLU, from Dean Pragerson. City attorney, be very, very cautious of what you do because you can be sued as well. So just to let everybody know, just be accountable for the uh, Brown Act, Ralph M. Brown Act. It's very serious. I'm down here now. Please don't violate nobody's uh, civil rights, and you won't have no problems with me. And I want to thank the outlaws. I want to thank Zuma Dog, Matt Dowd, and my new outlaws for being down here on a consistent basis. The Red Chief Hunt has now spoken. Thank you. Let's go to the general public comment. Yeah, 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 I'm good. You guys done a good job. No, Michael, thank you. Okay, do we have a Marisol, Deborah, Patrick, Brian, Wendy, please come forward. And identify yourself. Greetings, Council Member Mitchell Farrell. My name is Marisol. Thank you for this opportunity. I am a mother of two beautiful daughters, 13 and 10 years of age. I am also a widow. My husband died from a sudden death on March 2, 2013. For the last four years, I have been working to keep my property as I own a triplex. I was able to modify my property for two years at a 2% interest rate. Then right when my modification was coming to a close, my tenant moved out on July 31st, 2016. This was a beautiful, reliable tenant who purchased a home nearby and was moving out. I did not know what to do. Because of the Airbnb community, tools and resources that Airbnb provides, I was able to educate myself and increase my income during my second modification review. I not only got approved for a modification, I was approved for the life of the loan at 4%. I can only make my mortgage payments if I am allowed to be an Airbnb Thank host. You. Thank my daughters you. and I love Thank our you. neighborhood. So if I could have the next speaker, please. Identify yourself. My name is Wendy Winston. I was born in Echo Park and moved to the West Side in 1973. I've lived in my house in Venice for 18 years. I support a mentally challenged adult daughter and my 14-year-old grandson. I offer home sharing with people that work at the beach, as well as valets, shopkeepers, and, and people that work in restaurants. They often live far away and need a local place to sleep and shower for the night after a long day at work. I also home share through Airbnb. I refer guests uh, to local stores, uh, restaurants, businesses, modes of transportation. The guests support the community and help me support my family and keep my house. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, I'm Debbie Pollack. I'm a 30-year homeowner from Sherman Oaks. Hello, Councilman Rue. Nice to see you again. 
and Justin standing behind you, good to see you as well. I am one of the fortunate people in Los Angeles that I've owned my own home for 30 years and I've been a 35 year member of the Screen Actors Guild. I'm one of the fortunate people in Los Angeles who's had a long term career in the entertainment industry. The, but yet the majority of the acting jobs are written for people under 40, okay, under 50. Um, and so like an athlete, I am aging out of my career. Because I was a dancer on Broadway for many, many years, I have two titanium, uh, two titanium knees, so I'm also aging out of waiting tables. I'm proud to say, though, for the past three and a half years, I have not collected unemployment when my acting jobs end. Not because I'm an actor 365 days a year, but because I am an Airbnb host, and 365 days a year, I'm able to rent my home. I'm here to ask for your fair regulation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian? I turned in a leaflet from LaRouche Pack, uh, the economic platform. I uh, wanted to say that uh, because of the work of uh, the, mar the marriage between LaRouche and his wife, Helga LaRouche, uh, on calling for economic platform, that is, whatever you think economy is right now, uh, it is not. It is what the future holds in fusion technology and space exploration in, com in combination with uh, collaboration amongst Russia and China. Now, one of the things that I should actually mention is the topic of political perversion that you see amongst still the crowd of Obama in trying to, in a, in a way, perform a coup d'etat on Donald Trump. And that is to say that the American people have to be warned that we need to change this administration for the benefit of all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next. I'm Patrick Baca, homeowner in Council Member Rue's District 4, Sherman Oaks, just north of the village of Sherman Oaks Business District. A year ago, I experienced Airbnb as a traveling guest. It was such a great experience that it inspired me to give hosting a try. Today, I am a super host, a status earned for superior reviews. Home sharing income helps me pay the mortgage, my property taxes, and it allows me to continue improving my home and the neighborhood. Home sharing has given me freedom, confidence, and best of all, peace of mind. I am here today to respectfully ask that you not limit the, name, the number of days that I can home share so that I can continue to rest assured that my investment is safe and that I am going to get by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That closes uh, general public uh, comment. We'll go to item two. On that item, let's open. Mr. I have President, a card on that. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Robert uh, Lamashaw and Neil Brower, please come forward. I apologize for that. Good morning, council members. My name is Robert Lamashaw with JPL Zoning Services. I represent the developer on this project. Um, this property was approved for a four lot, small lot subdivision in 2016 pending the zone change which is what is before you today. The property has a general planned use designation of medium density which corresponds to only one zone, that is the R3 zone. The R3 zone would allow a density of approximately eight units. We're only proposing four single family homes via a small lot subdivision. We have worked with the community on the architectural and aesthetic elements of the project and have gotten general support, thanks very much to the council office's efforts. Uh, the Area Planning Commission and the staff determined that this project is consistent with the community plan, with the transportation element of the plan, with the exposition um, issues, you. and we request that you approve Thank you. this. Thank you. Yes, sir. I waive my presentation and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank okay. you. Okay. So it's my understanding, Mr. Koretz, we're going to continue this item until Tuesday, May 30th. Okay. So ordered. Let's close the hearing on this item. Madam Clerk, let's now uh, vote on items four, five, six.
7 and 8. Let's open the row. Close the row. Tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Thank you. Item six, fourth with. Okay, now we'll vote on uh, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Mr. President, uh, for number nine, um, an amend an amending motion was uh, posted, uh, circulated, and is now before council. Okay, so let's vote on those items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Let's go to item three. Item three. Do we have cards on three? Is there a doctor? So there are no cards on three? Okay, Ms. Martinez. Yeah, can I ask for item 10 to go forthwith on item 10? Without objection. Thank so you. ordered. Okay, on three, let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Mr. President, there's a request to uh, have item three go forth with, sir. Without objection, let's go to item 11 now. Item 11. So do we have uh, a couple of Gary's? Gary at uh, Fortis, Fordyce, Gary Agus, and Mike Agara. Please come forward. Yes, sir. Good morning, council members. My name is Gary Agus. I was born and raised in Sun Valley and live at 112 on Cohasset Street, Sun Valley. I'd like to thank you for the work you do and thank uh, Councilwoman Martinez particularly for her effort on, on this particular item. Unfortunately, this is a, a quality of ice life issue for senior veterans who will reside at this location. Um, I am for the, uh, the senior care. I am a, a Vietnam veteran, era veteran. I have volunteered at this public VA as a peer support facilitator for the last 12 years. I was president of the Sun Valley Area Neighborhood Council when this exact project came up for the developers and elder care facility. Our NC vigorously opposed because the site is bounded on two sides by the I freeway and the property overlooks eight lanes of freeway. Uh, air pollution at this site is horrendous. Diesel, tri diesel trucks going to and from the ports particularly. Thank you. If I could get the next Gary, maybe. Good morning, honorable council members. I am Gary Fordyce, serving on the North Hills West Neighborhood Council, serving on the Patient Advocate Council at the Sepulveda VA, a member of the Disabled American Veterans, having served in Vietnam, speaking as an individual on item 11. I support veterans housing. I do not support this project in this toxic location. Children and seniors are sensitive receptors to respiratory illness. Veterans have already been exposed to toxins of war. To further expose veterans to high levels of exhaust and diesel emissions where they reside can only lead to a slow death by toxicity. Helping veterans should not further harm veterans, serve veterans, protect veterans as they have served you. Now you can thank them for their service. I ask the council to table this motion and require a proper health study in honor of those who have served. Part of honoring a veteran is to do no harm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mike. I'm Mike O'Gara from Sun Valley. This project is dreadful. It's right at where two freeways meet, the 170 and the 5. 
When this came up as an elder care facility in 2013, the zoning administrator mandated that the building windows be sealed so the tenants could not open them and breathe the toxic air. Same thing with the doors. They had to put a big filtration system in there. They had the developer asked for a swimming pool. They had, how's it, the zoning administrator demanded that they put a glass dome over it because they didn't want them breathing the air outside. This is a dreadful sentence for a shortened lifespan for anybody who resides on that location. We would love 96 units of veterans housing in Sun Valley, but we don't want any housing on this location at 9041 Jerome. So that, this needs to be tabled so that you council members can find out the danger of the location that th they were trying to put this in. That location has a Two Thank freeways you. there. Thank Eight you. Long Thank lanes Thank of you. freeway traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, members, let's uh, prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, let's take up item one I. Oh, uh, Mr. President, number one, I, uh, there's a request to continue that to June 23rd, 30 days, sir. Okay, we have a card on that. Is uh, Schubert uh, Vertan here? Okay, so we will then continue that item, it's my understanding, to June 23rd? Yes, sir. So that item is continued. So if we could recess our regular meeting and go into our special meeting. Boomenfeld, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Harris Dawson, Wiesar, Coretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Do we have cards? Yes, sir. There are cards on. Okay, let me. Uh... Mr. President, first, for item number 15, that is an item for which public hearing has been held. However, there is a substitute motion submitted for item 15, and a public hearing should be held on that one, and there are cards. Okay, so do we have a, J a Jody Roth come forward? Waving? Okay, do we have a, a, a Haven, Dr. Haven? Ms. Haven? Okay, so if I could get uh, Mr. Hunt, Mr. Previn, Mr. Herman, and Mr. Spindler. Please come forward now. One minute on both items, sir. Mr. Chair? No, you just get one minute, just go ahead. Well, as we all know that on the conditions based on this two pages is all you can see, I'm just gonna read one major important aspect of it. Review the issue of maintenance and future care and responsibilities of the bridge. Now how fucking stupid can you get not having a maintenance for a bridge that expands from the east side to the west side? How can you have something like that? In San Francisco, that bridge is not coming down because it has a maintenance every year, all year long, until it drops with the next big earthquake coming soon for you. So to authorize the so-called Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety, Department of Cultural Affairs and Recreation and Parks, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, Nobody fucking cares. Find out thank what you. you're going to do about Th the maintenance. Thank you. Let's give him the minute for the other item. Okay, Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman. Mr. President, uh, the other item is number 16, and that is an item for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration, sir. It is sir. now before this body without objection. Go ahead, Mr. Herman. Folks, you don't need to wear a mask when coming here and speaking about what? Establishing a city's position regarding... Any changes to the statues of established national monuments? Can you believe that? 
What kind of bogus bullshit is this? Federal legislative program opposition to any changes of the, of the statutes of, of established national monuments? Well, I want to see a Trump statue placed here on Grand Park, saluting all the American veterans who have to go through this bullshit that you put them through to be homeless. Because without a new president like Trump to trump on the dumb fuck schmucks of Democrats who allowed this position of homelessness in our, in our streets and allow veteran children to suffer. Thank fuck you. Fuck you. Thank you. So again, if I, Mr. Previn, uh, Mr. Uh, Walt, I mean, Walsh, Mr. Hunt, John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or J. Walsh Confidential. Let me tell you what this is. As you know, we are taking down the Confederate soldiers, Jefferson Davis's huge monuments and their statues from where they are. Trump administration has a top secret plan that I found out about it to take these statues and put them on national monument territory. That's what this is about. The L, uh, this city council member members won't admit it, but that's the only reason they want to guarantee that nothing else goes up on national monument territory. This is, and that's what's happening here. Look what it says, status of established national monument by the current presidential administration. That's what's happening here. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Okay, I don't see Mr. Previn or Hunt or, or Spindler, uh, so we can vote on this right now, Mr. Kretz. They are not here. Do you want Mr. <laughs> Kretz? Yeah, I just wanted to point out what we're doing and what the Trump administration is trying to do. Um, we've been proclaiming national monuments uh, since Teddy Roosevelt's time. There are 27 of them. Um, if uh, the Trump administration is allowed to do what it wants, they'll be drilling in the Grand Canyon and Muir Woods and uh, others of these monuments. So we should be strongly out there in, in opposition of uh, this plan. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hunt. Okay, Mr. Hunt. Let's prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. We vote on, we'll vote on item 15, then item 16. So let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Now we're on item, si item 16. Did I confuse you, Mr. O'Farrell? Did I mess something up? I think we were voting on 15 yet. I mean, it's okay if we voted on 15. I was just going to give a preface, but if it's already... Uh, a unanimous vote, and, and I'm good with it. Okay, uh, then that's my mistake. I should have clarified it early. Now we're on item uh, 16. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, in this special meeting, is there any other business? Then let's adjourn and return to the regular. Okay, now we're back in regular session. Is there any items or additional Ms. items before this body? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, items, uh, there's just on item one, sir. Okay, this vote on the balance of item one. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. That brings us where? Council has uh, motions for posting and referral, sir. Uh, what was that, uh, Madam Clerk? Council has motions for posting and referral, sir. That they're posted, they're referred. Announcements, members? Announcements? No announcements. If all could please rise. If all could please rise. Adjourning motions all rise. 
I'm looking to my left side, Mr. Blumenfield. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, colleagues. Uh, I'd, like to us, I'd like to ask that we adjourn in the memory of Ignacio Sanchez Navarro. He was tragically killed in the early morning hours on May 24th last week. He was riding his bicycle to his home in Winnetka at about 12.45 a.m. after working at a, a local sushi place near Ventura in Tampa. A motorist struck Mr. Navarro and his colleague while they were riding northbound on Winnetka Avenue uh, between the Orange Line bike path and Van Owen. Mr. Navarro was killed. The other individual suffered severe injuries and is in critical condition. I don't know that much about Mr. Navarro. I went to a, a sort of ghost bike memorial last night where they put out one of those white bicycles to memorialize uh, this, this tragic, I'll call it a murder. I mean, it's a hit and run murder. But something eerie about this I wanted to also mention. Uh, you may have remembered during the budget conversations, I, I laid out as President talked about um, how we need to spend our money not just exclusively on the Vision Zero, but using the concept of the Vision Zero for a holistic approach. And I cited an example of a street uh, along Winnetka, and sadly, the exact spot that I was talking about where there was, where we're ultimately I think we need to connect a bike lane where there's no bike lane was eerily the exact spot where this, this young man was killed. So the LAPD needs help in identifying the lo and locating the hit and run driver. The vehicle involved is a white Ford or uh, Chevrolet utility style pickup truck with toolboxes on the sides and possibly front end damage. There's a partial commercial license plate, 7U2432. The motorist was described as a, as a white male in his late 30s or early 40s with close cropped hair on his head and facial hair. Um, so I want to, in addition to adjourning his memory, ask for any help for folks to help locate uh, and, and turn this person in. If you have anyone has any information, call 877-LAPD, you know, or 877-527-3247. The, the family, they are looking for leads uh, for this tragic murder. And tragic it is. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Mr. President. Just um, to our the Navarro family, our hearts and prayers go out to uh, the entire family and community. Mr. Bloomfield, thank you for shedding light to this, this hit and run uh, tragedy. Uh, I heard the reports on that morning coming into work, and it reminded myself how this council continues to support. Uh, these uh, standing reward motions are no longer motions. They're now standing rewards on any hit and run fatalities, $50,000 for anyone that comes forward with the information um, and to guide the prosecution and arrest of this thug who committed this horrendous uh, murder, Mr. Navarro. And um, we hope that someone comes forward. And um, this has been the this council's effort to do everything we can to change, change the driver's driver's culture in this city. And you're right, if we can um, look at, find ways to address uh, some of these uh, high, in, high injury impact net networks of, of corridors, we can um, not only reduce, but also eliminate these types of, of crimes from occurring in our cities. Thank you for. Now I'm looking to my right side. I don't, Mr. Krikorian. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It's not so much an adjourning motion, but as we adjourn, uh, I hope that we'll all be mindful that Monday is Memorial Day. And um, while many Angelinos, I'm sure, will take it as an opportunity to uh, shop and go to the beach and things like that, I hope that all of us and all who are watching at home will also remember uh, the importance of the day in acknowledging solemnly remembering and thanking all of those who gave that last full measure of devotion to our country. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Krikorian. With that said, uh, members, be safe. This council is adjourned.
I work for the number one tug and barge company in the busiest port in the United States. I've been a tugboat captain since around 1998. In the industry since 1992, I joined the Coast Guard right out of high school. My dad thought I needed boot camp, so he talked me into going in the Coast Guard. I had a chief that knew somebody that was in the tug industry, and I just thought it was fascinating. I like the responsibility of the job. You know, once, once you're underway, it, it's your ship. You usually work at a really high pace, and I like that because it makes the, makes the shift go by really fast. We check in when we first come to work, and we could be doing a tanker, we could be doing a, an escort from sea, we, we could be moving a barge, we never know. The larger ships coming into the port nowadays have up to three tugs on them. Generally, you have one on the stern of the ship helping steer and uh, helping for brakes, and uh, the other tug or tugs will be up on, the, on either shoulder. This tug, the Lila Franco, has 66 tons of bollard pull. We can operate forward and backwards and to a limited uh, scope sideways. And I do a lot of the, the ship rescues and the special operations. One of the first ship rescues I did here at Harlem Marine was a container ship that was disabled about a thousand miles due west. And we went through at least three storms on the way out and we were into 35, 40 foot seas. And we got out there and we got the ship back into port all in one piece. Harley Marine's a great organization to work for. In the Port of Los Angeles, we have uh, nearly 100 employees. And it's, it's always growing, which is a nice thing. Working in the port allows me to come here and work for my five days on, earn a great living, and then go home for five days and be able to enjoy the area I grew up with with my family. When I'm not at work, I'm usually keeping my five kids entertained. We try and get them outside as much as possible. My family goes way back uh, generations and generations in the, in the industry. I would say I was destined to be working on tugboats.